starting at the end of this service, we are in a new era. We are in a new season. We are in a building season. Somebody say, we're builders. We're builders. And what better time for us to be propelled into building than on today when God shows us the single most important thing that could have ever been done to prepare us to build. Now watch this. Don't languish building. Don't look around and, and, and see whether or not somebody is here or somebody is not. God will send people who want to build. So your prayer assignment this week, yeah, I know, on Resurrection Sunday, I'm giving you a prayer assignment. Your assignment, come on, smile at me, Minister B. Your assignment this week is to pray for the strength to build and to pray that God would add builders to our number. Amen? Now, I also understand this. It is not my responsibility to grow a church. It is my responsibility to plant and water. Dunamis is Jesus' church. Dunamis belongs to the Lord, and I take instructions. I got a board that sits above me. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and they've been talking this week. Amen? So I'm excited about where we're going to go. But here's the other thing that I've also noticed, that when you get a group of sheep together and there's a sheep over by itself or a sheep or a couple sheep over by itself, even if that sheep or those sheep that are isolated, sheep, sheep, whatever, whatever, um, even if they're isolated, they are predisposed to move themselves closer to the herd. Amen. So as long as we be sheep, sheep will come. Because the Holy Spirit is going to draw each and everything we need. I have a pastor friend. You will meet him very soon. He's a phenomenal man of God. And he's prayed one thing over this church for the last seven months. It is this one thing he's been praying over this church and over me. That God would give you what you need. Because when God gives you what you need then you can truly begin to recognize what you want. Amen? Amen. Somebody to nudge somebody and say, I'm a builder. All right, we got one more. We got one more Easter parade. Micah. Come here, Micah. Y'all give it up for Micah. Come on, man cleaner than the Board of Health. Oh, Jesus. Sharper than a scalpel. I'm saying, bruh, vest, bow tie, looking good. Y'all give it up for Micah one more time. You can go back to dad. There he is. All right. So, I'm excited about the word this morning. How many of y'all got Easter dinner in the oven, in a crock pot? Sybil does. Okay, nobody. Y'all going out to eat? What happened to the times have changed? Jesus. My, old, my home pastor, Mona, used to stand up and say, who got food in the crock pot? And at least 60 people would raise their hand. And then he would, like, just decide whose house he was going to show up at. I don't have many options here today. I don't have many options here today. Okay. Um, last announcement. Um, all the Dunamites. How many responses? Did we get many responses for next Wednesday? We got 10 so far. If you haven't responded to the email that went out um, to, uh, from Minister Barber, please do so. Please do so because we're ready to send you some information about um, our time together on Wednesday. We will not have Wednesday in the Word here. Don't come here. Another church will be here. 
they're, they're starting their move in on Tuesday. We move out officially. We turn over the keys tomorrow evening. All right. So uh, bye bye two two nine. Don't come here on Wednesday, all right? But for those of you all that got that email, and if you didn't get that email, make sure Minister Barbara has your email address because I definitely want to see you at Wednesday. Location will be announced tonight. Location will be announced tonight. Pastor's asking me to come and chill out. And it, it, listen, it ain't no deep meeting. It ain't no church meeting. I ain't got no more announcements for y'all. Uh, but there will be food. Okay. That includes musicians, too, because typically in black churches, musicians don't come to nothing but church. But y'all different. Somebody say, I'm different. I'm just playing. All right. I had some good coffee this morning. Last announcement that I have. Um, on uh, Friday, Good Friday, um, I, we added a new member to the family. Amen. Y'all think about the Dunamis family. I'm talking about the Birdsong family. So Samuel and I picked up a puppy. The puppy lives with me. I had a puppy in over 25 years. And I forgot that it's like a child. Like, cried more than Samuel cried when he was a baby. Yelping. And, and, and when I mean my dog is a singer, he was howling last night like crazy. So I ain't going to really be up here long. But I got a doggy cam installed. He's sleeping in his crate right now. But I know only have a little bit of time before he be on crunk again. Um, he's a, a Kava, Kava Sean. Not a Kavapoo, but a Cavachon. He's a cross between a Cavalier Spaniel from England and a Bachon, Friche, from, Fran from France. So cute little dog, lots of joy, lots of happiness, um, and um, lots of no sleep. All right. Are y'all ready for the word? Amen. All right. So the word is coming from um, Luke chapter 24, verse uh, six. If you would stand before we get to that, go back to that home slide for a second. Um, I want you to stand on your feet, honor God's word. Let's confess who we are in the word. So good to see all of y'all. So good to see all of y'all. Can y'all give love for praise and worship this morning? Amen. 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 All right. Let's confess who we are in the word. Ready? Confess. I'm anointed to understand and apply the word of God. My life yields outstanding, phenomenal, supernatural results that are superior to the world's. Father God, I thank you for this word. I thank you for this quick word and what you're doing in our lives. You are so awesome. You're so excellent. You're so powerful. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 in your Bible. And we're going to look at verse 6. Luke chapter 24 verse 6. Luke chapter 24, verse 6. Matthew, Mark, Luke, third of the Gospels, third book of the New Testament. Luke chapter 24, verse 6. When you have it, say, I got it, Pastor. I'll wait for a couple more moments. Amen. The Word of God is alive. Jesus is alive. You are alive. That's the trifecta right there. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Luke chapter 24. I just feel in my shana now that Bria is going to help me preach this morning. You going to help me preach? Amen. Luke 24 and 6. Luke 24 and 6. All right. You got it? Say, I got it, Pastor. All right. Here it is. Uh, let's read. Ready? Read. He isn't here. That's enough. Be seated. Hallelujah. He, he isn't here. Somebody touch your friend or your neighbor, your, your whoever, and say, he, he ain't here, child. He ain't here. He ain't here. He ain't here. It's crazy because today's message is simply called empty equals full. I want you to put that graphic back up for me, Nathan. Empty equals full. And, and I'll be honest with you, it's, it's, it's interesting because sometimes God's math don't be mathing. And you got to sometimes be okay 
with not truly, fully grasping all that God is. Because the, the point is, is that if we grasp Mama Danella, who God is in its entirety, then we would probably try to be God. So there's this mysterious layer of God that will remain mysterious because he reveals himself gradually and progressively through the lives of those who are connected to him through Jesus Christ. Somebody say, got to be connected through Jesus Christ. So when I say empty equals full, you got to understand that today we celebrate the greatest act ever, ever, ever done. We celebrate it today. Now, there are people who will argue with you and say three days means Monday or third day doesn't necessarily mean Sunday. I'm not here to debate how long he was there. I am here to remind those that really, really understand the significance of what has been done for you that he got up. I'm excited that he got up. Even if he was dead for 10 minutes, I'm excited that he got up. Is there anybody else in here that's excited that Jesus rose for you? Amen. Amen. So he isn't here, and it's important that you really hearken to what the angel of the Lord told Mary as she came to the, uh, the empty tomb. The angel literally said, hey, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? Now, right there, I could really minister on that point because we get caught up sometimes looking for alive things amongst dead things. We, we go to dead things looking for things that are alive. I am so glad that Jesus is not dead. I'm so glad that Jesus is not dead. And watch this, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the Bible says is the same power. Somebody say same power. Same power. It's the same power that God has working on the inside of you right now via his Holy Spirit. Okay, I want you to get this. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is working in you via his Holy Spirit. Can I, can I say it one more time like I feel it? The same, the same, not a variant, not an offshoot, but the same power that raised Christ from the dead, God says, you can come have some too. If you walk in my spirit, you can have some too. But here's what I want you to know very quickly. Listen, God is, I've said this a thousand times, it will register today like never before. God is strategic. He is a thinker. Watch this. Now, I want to give this to you because you've got to understand that nothing catches God by surprise. Watch this. God knew that Jesus was going to be born to die. Watch this. No one has pretty much died for you. But Jesus died for you. Even when it was hard for him to accept the fact that he had to go to the cross for you, he put his will aside, he put his humanity aside and said, this feels absolutely awful to my body, to my, to my soul. This is excruciating to me, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And he submitted himself to a cross. Jesus, I know, has all the riches and all the cattle on a thousand hill. Jesus is the bomb. But you got to understand that Jesus was a borrower. Jesus was born in a borrowed manger. Jesus rode a borrowed donkey into Jerusalem. Jesus was crucified on a borrowed cross. I don't want to take you back to Good Friday too long, but I want to let you know that the cross is not a Jewish entity. It's a Roman form of capital punishment. So it was literally 
unlawful for Jewish people to put people to death. But the Romans were in control and they were occupying the area and they were the ones that put Jesus Christ on the cross physically. But the Jewish people put him on there spiritually because they did not recognize who he was because they were too busy looking for someone that would deliver them from the oppressive hand of the Romans. They didn't expect a gentle savior. They didn't expect somebody who was meek and mild. They didn't expect somebody that wasn't trying to be famous. They wanted somebody to come in with a sword and liberate them. But Jesus says, I'm going to liberate people for show. Not for sure, but for show. I'm going to I'm going to liberate them for show, but I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to do it a way that nobody sees coming. I'm going to do it a way that is different from the world. God is strategic. Jesus had to die, and God knew all about it. Amen? There has always, somebody say always. There has always been a plan in action. You might not have a plan, but God has a plan. Amen? As a matter of fact, your ways might not be his ways. Your thoughts might not be his thoughts. Watch this. Watch this. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? There are ways that we go that aren't necessarily the ways that God would have us go. But God always has a plan. Can I submit something to y'all before you go to sleep on me? Here it is. If Christ, let's just let's put it like this. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, Roz, I'm going I'm to be really introspective for a moment. Watch this. If Christ is not risen, if Christ did not rise from the dead, then my preaching is in vain. It's useless for me to be up here if Christ did not rise. Because that's what the gospel compels us as preachers and ministers to do, to remind people that we don't serve a dead Savior. We serve a living Savior. The Bible literally says that he's in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father, praying for you. He's active. He's not passive. He's not a past tense. He is past, future, and present, all wrapped up in one. So if Christ is not risen, then I'm wasting my breath, man. I might as well go ahead, put a breath mint in, and go find me Sunday dinner. Number two, if Christ did not rise, then faith is in vain. Can I break down faith for you very quickly? I didn't see nobody come in here and before you sat down, wiggle the legs of a chair. I didn't see you check to see if all the screws are in. What if I let you know that some of the chairs that you're sitting in are missing screws? Some of y'all shifting in your seat trying to test the seat now. But you came in and you set your bottom in a seat without thinking. Why? Because you trust that what you sat on would hold you. Without question, you came in. Some of y'all who come on a regular basis, you know that you've never fallen out of a chair. You don't even know who the manufacturer is. It's Bertolini, but you don't know who the manufacturer is, but you trust the chair. How much more should you trust the manufacturer of your life? Without all these questions and without all of these doubts. But if Christ is still dead, faith is dead. Okay? Watch this. If Christ is dead, I'm just playing a little game here right now. Watch this. If Christ is dead, we are all false witnesses. How many of y'all have ever told somebody about Jesus? If Christ is dead, you're a liar. But we believe, somebody say, we believe believe. that he's alive. But if Christ did not rise from the dead, Jamal, you know what? We are all still in our sins. If Christ is dead, you are sinful and you are going to hell. 
H-E double hockey sticks. Hades, that hot place. And no, the devil is not red muscular with big horns. That's if Christ did not rise. But for about 30 seconds, do I have anybody in this room who are glad that Christ is not dead? Make some noise. If you're glad that he is not dead. So here's what happened on the chat. Nathan, you ready for that statement? Throw that up there. Here's what happened on the chat this morning. Nobody's home. Nobody home. When I'm talking about that empty tomb, nobody's home. Hell, ring the doorbell all you want. But nobody's home because that empty tomb, that empty tomb, that vacated tomb was enough to fill my life. Amen. Now watch this. A story is told that when Joseph of Arimathea went to Pontius Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, Pontius Pilate said, hey, why did you put Jesus, or why do you want to put Jesus in this expensive tomb? You are a man of reputation. You're a man of great wealth, and this tomb is extravagant. This tomb is like the bomb. You put royalty in this tomb. And the story is told that Joseph of Amarathea said, I'm not concerned about that. I'm not concerned about it. Pilate said, you should be concerned because this guy claimed to be the king of the Jews and, and my people just crucified him and he's not worth anything. He's not worth anything. And Joseph of Amarathea says, yes, he is worth something. He's worth enough for me to be bold to come into you because Joseph of Amarathea is still a Jew himself. And you don't just roll up on Roman officials and be like, give me this. He rolled up and said, give me Jesus's body. I'll take it. Because it deserves a certain type of burial. So Pilate says, man, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure you want to put this man in your fresh new tomb that's for your family? Really, you're, you're, you're not supposed to put anybody in your family stuff. Joseph of Amarathea looks at Pontius Pilate and says, I'm not worried. It's only for a weekend. Oh, y'all missed it. He won't be there long. <laughs> He's not like that squatter that moves in and you can't get him out. Whew. Just for a hot second, I need a place to lay him down. Because secretly, I ain't telling all my friends this, but secretly I believe he's just passing through. I, I, just, I, I just, just temporary use. Airbnb for a couple days and then gone. Watch this. Jesus was buried and he died. And, and the Bible says that they put a stone on the door. That stone, if you're taking good notes, I'm almost done. That stone for you uh, uh, that symbolizes rather limitations. Somebody say no more limitations. Because the Bible says that the stone was rolled away. So I decree and declare that whatever's been blocking you from getting into the new season, the new era, the new place that God has for you. Somebody say, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Watch this. If the tomb could not hold Jesus, watch this. My problem cannot hold me. I wish somebody would just go ahead and say, go ahead in faith and say, I am, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm coming out of this because God has something more for me. Here is why. It had to be rolled away because the Bible says later on in all the, all, the, uh, all the Gospels that Jesus was seen by many people. So the stone had to be removed, Mama Danella, because Jesus had to go on a victory tour. And people had to literally see him risen from the dead. 
Uh, even those that didn't even know what he was talking about thought he was talking about cryptic language. If you tear this temple down in three days, I will raise it up again. They were doing all that. And, oh, I wonder what he means. I wonder. What, some of his disciples were like, I wonder what he means. I don't know what he said. And then Jesus says, I'm going to tell you what I mean by showing you that I'm here. Oh, that's going to be good for somebody. If you read your Bible from the lens of Jesus being risen from the dead, you don't have to worry about if he's coming, he's here. Wherever you are, he's already here. Amen? Limitations gone. Problems gone. Situations gone. Illness is gone. Anything that's blocking you from your destiny is gone. Give God glory for that. Give God glory for that. The stone that the builders rejected moved the stone that the people put on the door. I'm hanging with the stronger stone. If, if we were Baptists, we would have shouted right there. I'm hanging with the strongest stone. Watch this. Not only in that tomb did the stone get rolled away, but clothes were left behind. Now, Jesus being Jesus ain't going to leave stuff in disarray. So the Bible says across the Gospels, and this is the story that is across all four of the Gospels, and I'd say read all four of the accounts, right? Watch this. Jesus didn't leave his room a mess. The, some of y'all thinking about your bedroom right now. Can I, I got a confession. I got a confession because I got something that acts like a child in my house right now. I didn't make up my bed this morning. It started yelping, and yelping at 530 and I just jumped up and got into action. But guess what? I didn't make up my bed, but Jesus made up his. The Bible says that the garments, the linen garments that he was wrapped in were, were neatly placed. He took the time to fold it and crease it. The clothes were left behind. The reason why Jesus left those clothes behind is because the new look that I have, I don't need that. Okay, y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Since I'm coming out of this thing, since I'm coming out into a new, new life, and into a new era, I can't have on the same clothes that I had on before. Watch this. And I've already proven to you that when God changes your life, he also changes your attire. Come here, Lazarus. Come forth. And the Bible says that the grave clothes had to come off of him. They had to loose them and let them go. So watch this. You can't walk around in your new season in some old clothes. What they, what they wrapped you up with for death ain't the same thing you're going to wear for life. I feel the anointing in here this morning. This ain't just an Easter anointing. This is the new era of Pastor A. I want to tell somebody this morning, change your clothes. Look at your neighbor and say, change your clothes. Change your clothes. Woo. So if you got a sanctified imagination like me, you're probably thinking, so what did he have on? If they wrapped them in clothes and laid them in a tomb, they wrapped them in swaddling clothes and laid them in a manger. There's something about people putting stuff on Jesus to lay them down. But Jesus didn't leave the tomb naked because his resurrected body looked drastically different than his physical body. Still looked like Jesus. But if you read the accounts, there were several times when he was having discussions with people post-resurrection and they didn't even know who he was. So watch this. If you're not careful, you will walk out of another Easter resurrection Sunday not recognizing who Jesus is because you haven't put yourself in a new place with him. Are y'all hearing me? So some of y'all need to go ahead and get some of these other clothes off, some of the dead stuff that you've been carrying, some of the baggage that you've been carrying. One of the funniest things I ever saw, you work in airports, you do with baggage, right? Watch this. One of the funniest things I ever saw was someone trying to carry, drag a bag that was old. And I start to say to myself, one bump, one bump is all it's going to take. And here is the funny thing. The luggage had an LV on it. But the way that wheel was wobbling, I knew it was an imitation. It could not be Louis for real. 
Not with that wheel. And listen, and if I got Louis luggage, I'm not walking through no airport with no waggly wheel. But I'm like, if you hit a bump, and, 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 and what happened is they, they were, I guess, trying to get on one of those things that, that uh, helps you move faster. Y'all seen them in the airport? The little escalator that don't go up, it just goes forward. I love those things. I'm like, get out of my way. Beep, beep. Watch this. Got on that thing, and the zipper broke. The zipper broke, and all their clothes. And they just are walking. I'm like, hey, you leaving clothes behind because your bag, I'm done. Your bag was cheap. You leaving clothes behind. I didn't say that. But what I said, what I want to say to y'all this morning is, listen, don't be carrying the cheap stuff into your prosperous season. Some of y'all about to go places you never thought you were going to go. You're going to do things that you never thought you were going to do. You're going to see things that you never thought you were going to see. Some of y'all, watch this, the, the, first, the first stage of that is just you getting in your mind that God can do it. Let me say that again. Some of y'all, the first step is you just getting in your mind that God loves you enough to do it. Okay, can we just give God a really quick, it will happen praise? I don't know what I look like right now. I don't know what I'm going through right now, but it will happen. Your word, your word will prevail. Your word will be performed in my life. It will happen. I will see. I shall live and not die. The empty tomb was only temporary because what God had already said. God had already said he's getting up. So the tomb was all, it was just like a pit stop. The tomb ain't Bucky's. Okay, don't nobody know what Bucky's is. Wave your hands if you've ever seen Bucky's. Bucky's. If you've ever gone into Bucky's, you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Bucky's is like a gas station the size of a Walmart. And let me tell you something about Bucky's. There's not one in North Carolina. There's one in South Carolina, in Florence, right? And there's one that's coming. They're they coming. they coming. But watch this. If you go down 85 heading towards Atlanta, there's not one in Atlanta. There's one beyond Atlanta down in Alabama, in Auburn. Where Stacy loves, she's she an Auburn fan. Y'all pray her strength in the Lord. But watch this. But here's what you see on those Bucky signs. You see a Bucky, which I think is, uh, I guess, uh, beaver. And you see stuff that says 233 miles. I'm used to seeing sick go quarter of a mile. Exxon, quarter of a mile. BP, two miles. Why would someone advertise their gas station 233 miles away from it? It ain't all about the Buckies in Auburn. Although you can get there. There's one right outside of Birmingham, too, although you can get there. But the reason why they have already said that Buckies is 233 miles away is because it won't be long before there's one closer. And what they want you to understand, marketing major, is that when they put one near you, the relief of not having to go 233 miles will capture you and bring you into the nearest store. So now they built in North Carolina that is far away. But in a moment, it won't be. And they're going to start advertising that it's 25 miles away. And that it's 15 miles away. And before you know it, it's closer than it's ever been. That's what God is doing in your life right now. It might seem like it's a long way off. Though the vision tarry, wait for it. Be patient for it. Though it tarry, be patient. Because God has a right to change the sign anytime he wants to. It may read 233 miles today. 
But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in a resurrection, it could read 0.1 miles. Come on, I want somebody to understand that you're not as far from where you think you are as you are. You are closer than you've ever been because of the resurrection of Christ. Amen? All right. Jesus emptied himself to fill you up. You can't go far on empty. I know some of y'all like to ride on empty, but you got to get filled up again. Watch this. Go back to that title slide. I want to show you something. It's, it's, it's designed to let you know that empty equals full. But what is full? What color is full? Red. Jesus drained his blood to fill you with his. It's the blood of Jesus. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Somebody say, I'm full. I'm full. Let me get out of here very quickly. Watch this. Jesus overcame so that you can overcome. Okay, I'm about to, I'm about to throw a Hail Mary. Here it is. Whatever Jesus, Michaela, whatever Jesus overcame, you have the right to overcome. Jerome, let me, let me put it like this, man. If I truly want to be victorious, I got to study how Jesus won. And then when I know what Jesus won, I can apply that to me. Does that make sense? Okay, there are just some things that I didn't have to go through because my parents went through them. Right? So I got grandfathered into this thing because they know, don't, don't put your hand on that stove. I can overcome stupidity in some areas because Jesus paid the price for me to be wise. I can make good decisions in some areas because God, Jesus paid the price for me to be patient. I ain't got to go running up after everybody and everything that makes me feel good. So somebody say, Jesus. Oh, say it like you really mean it. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Okay, can we, can we say it like I really mean it? Say, Jesus. Watch this. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Resurrection and the life. We don't stop at resurrection because after resurrection, there has to be life. Ah, uh, come on. After death, there has to be life. I don't have time to go to 1 Corinthians 15, but Paul really mocks death and says, Death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Watch this. Death is not it for us. Mm, somebody saw my post last night. I said the grave is nothing but a gateway. Why are we scared to die if we live afterwards? Woo! Paul says, I'm, I'm betwixt and between because there's a part of me that wants, wants to stay here and deal with y'all crazy folk. And there's a part of me that wants to go home and be with God. I want to go home. Now, I don't want to commit suicide. I want God to take me home. Can God just take me like Enoch? I'm just walking with the Lord and then no more. I mean, I don't know. If, I, I, I felt like that a couple times. Lord, take me now. I'm ready. Lord said, shut up. <laughs> you got a son. You got a church. You got a, a wonderful job. You make an impact in community. It ain't your time yet. Somebody say it ain't my time yet. And look at somebody, touch them, and say, it ain't my time yet. <laughs> say, say it one more time. Like, I mean, like, like shove them like you really love them and say, it ain't my time yet. <laughs> now watch this. Then ask them, then, 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 then look at them and say, so why? Let, ask them, so why? So why? Why is it not your time yet? Because I'm about to give you three E's. Here it is, and we out of here. In five minutes, one. He's the resurrection and the life, Mama Danella. You ready? You ready to dance with me? He's the resurrection and the life because he came to give you enjoyable life. Oh, it's time to enjoy life. It's, it's time to, to, 
to, to be happy and, and, and joyous. It's time for us to, to smile more and to, to be more excited about what God is doing. It's time. Somebody say it's time, it's time. for enjoyable life. I have scripture, John 10, 10. Here it is. It says in the Bible, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose, my purpose, Jesus' purpose is greater than any purpose that the enemy might have. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Somebody say, enjoy life, baby. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all ready for the number? The second E is this. He's the resurrection and the life. Because he wants to give you an exciting life. All y'all boring folk, go get a life. I want some excitement. I want to, I want to have, I went over to, uh, uh, can I throw y'all out there? I went over to Julian and Angel's house. They were having a meeting for something else. And I said, I'm crashing. Because I heard you cooking. Julian can cook, y'all. He's a chef, a trained chef. And it had been a long time since I had his food. And I sat down in front of fried chicken, baked chicken, mac and cheese, yams, string beans, and cornbread that was fluffy and had the anointed of Jesus. And the homemade, all of it, all of it, homemade. You walked in the house and you said, the oven is tired. I just looked at the oven and said, you, you're tired. Let me tell you, you know when you're about to eat good when you can't see the counter for all of the pans of food on it. Walk into somebody's house and you can see plenty of counter space. They ain't done nothing. You walk into a house like theirs and you can't see nothing but the sink. You know it's on. So they were having a meeting for uh, the, 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 the team that is helping produce the project that Angel is got, getting ready to release, right? So I was like, I, I ain't on the project. I ain't singing. I ain't playing. But I'm the pastor. I'm pulling the pastor card. And I'm coming. I pretty much invited myself over. I really did. I really did. But I sat down at the table. And we ain't talk about church. We talked about music and, 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 and musicians and styles of music and how to build out a recording studio. But when I tell you I laughed, I laughed like I hadn't laughed it. Laughed it. Oh, God. I laughed like I hadn't laughed in months. I'm talking about that full belly, leaning back in the chair. Yes. <laughs> Julian, what was that statement? No, I ain't going to make that statement. <laughs> I ain't going to make that statement. But the, the, the <laughs> I'm just laughing thinking about it. But listen, you got to enjoy life. And sometimes it's just the simple things of just being with the people you love, sitting down at a table, cutting the breeze. In the case with Michaela, it's playing spades. That's my spades partner right there. It's just chilling out. It's just taking a breath. It's not worrying about how you're going to pay the bill. It's just, it's just taking some time to walk in nature. For me, that means take Allegra and Flonase before you go outside. I get it. But just enjoy life. Have an exciting life. John 15, 11. John 15, 11. Here it is. I got to get out of here one minute. John 15, 11 says the following. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Somebody say Jesus' joy. You'll be filled with Jesus' joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I decree and I announce over your life joy that is uncontrollable. Joy that is not filtered by your situation, your circumstance is not filtered by who says they like you or who doesn't like you. Filtered only by the pure joy that comes from God. It's time for you to enjoy your life. It's a right that was purchased for you on Calvary and sealed for you in the resurrection. 
Somebody just practice laughing. Practice laughing. Just laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, practice laughing. Some of y'all don't even know how to trigger a laugh. If I told you a joke, okay, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. What kind of salad dressing do cowboys like? Ranch. <laughs> Cat Williams ain't got nothing on me. Number three, this is the one. We're going home. Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Somebody say, he's the resurrection and the life. The third E I'm going to give you is that he has given you eternal life. Yeah, the first life was enjoyable. The second one was exciting, but the most important one is eternal. That means that there's something beyond this. Can, you, can I give you perspective? If we had a line drawn, your life, your 60, 70, 80 years is a blip because you were before you were, before you became, you were, now you've been, and you will forever be. <laughs> Y'all missed it. I practiced it. I rehearsed it. I can't even say it again because I just got it. About 15 minutes ago, I was like, God, I got to release it. I got to release it. You were before you were. You are now so that you can be everlasting then. Somebody say, I ain't, I'm going to die, but I'm going to live again. Jesus has showed me that there's something after. <laughs> Listen, eternal life. Can we go to John 3.16? John 3.16, and then we're going home, right? John 3.16 says the following. Can I do it? Can I do it, Michaela? Can I do it? Uh, Chelsea, can I do it, minister? Uh, and the Bible says, watch this. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Is there anybody who's willing to give God glory for eternal life right now? Come on, come on, come on. You got to be louder than that. You got to give God glory for what is to come. I see you, Micah, waving your hand. I don't know what I'm going through. I don't know how to feel about this situation, but there's something beyond the river. Hallelujah. 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 So watch this. He left it empty so that I could be full. I can walk with my head held high knowing that God has kicked off something in my life because he rose from the dead. And watch this. He rose from the dead to plant a seed. And the seed that he planted was the church, the church immutable, the church invisible, the church all-powerful. He said we are the church. He died and he rose from the dead so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So somebody take about 30 seconds and give God a major praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't be quiet right now. Don't be quiet right now. The angels weren't quiet. The angels were like, yep, he's getting up. Yeah, those, those clothes can't hold him. That door got to be open. All of heaven was like, yep, just like the Father said. Yep, just like the Scripture said. The Bible said that he was going to raise up from the dead and that he was going to show himself to his disciples. And now we get ready for the ascension which is the kickoff of what God is trying to do in dunamis. Somebody say, we are, in, oh, let me put it like this. We are the impossibility that the world's been waiting on. Watch this, watch this. The impossibility is like this. You got to show up and show them what hasn't been possible before. Yeah, you thought I was going to say that y'all are the possibility. But God has already proven that you are the possibility. You are the impossibility. You got to show up and you say impossibility. You got to move out the way. Because he who has begun a good work in me shall complete it until the day of redemption. So God is great and greatly to be praised. Is there anybody in here that will say, God, I love you. God, I worship you. 
God, I want you. Empty equals full. Show that to your math teacher. Next time you feel empty, say, God, fill me up with your blood. Fill me up with your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You show up as the impossibility. It's not the two of the impossibilities that it was impossible to them. But the moment you showed up, they see God as possible. So here's your assignment, not only to pray for builders, but your assignment this week is to show up. Because God says it's time to show out. Put your hands together and give him one more hand clap of praise. Come on, let God come out of your mouth. Give him glory. 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 Hallelujah.